I couldn't imagine what this would be like even 10 years ago if we had this hit um, yeah. our country because we didn't have, even 10 years ago, as much technology as we have now with Zoom and Skype and FaceTime and all that stuff. We've now entered into the summer season and the coronavirus is still with us. Looking at the fall, it does appear that the virus will continue to be impacting our world, but specifically our schools. My wife works in the public school system as an occupational therapist and her job has looked very different these last couple of months. I work with kids with a variety of abilities. So whether they are nonverbal um, or they're fully functional and they can speak. So um, for example, like a child who's nonverbal, I help them um, with using a computer in order for them to learn how to type their name or if they don't have um, use of their arms and they're in a wheelchair, like using a switch in order for them to hit the switch with their head in order to use a, to speak with yeah. a voice output. So yeah. something like that. It's pretty broad, <laughs> but um, it's pretty cool because you can, you really have to think outside the box and be creative um, and just help the student whatever level they're at, so. Do you enjoy your job? Yeah, most days. <laughs> I think some days can be challenging because of um, like parents wanting more for their kids that we can only provide like uh, certain things for them according to rules and laws. Um, so kind of just like educating people along the process um, in order to best support their child. The focus of Emily's job hasn't changed, but new challenges have come into perspective. Like how in the world do you teach these skills at a distance or through a computer? How can she actually assist parents who already have their plates full? As a therapist, she's having to navigate uncharted territory. Kind of just supporting parents with resources where they're at, because we don't want to overwhelm parents. Um, a really good note that I got from my supervisor yesterday was like, we're not expecting kids to make progress during this period. It's more like maintaining the skills they have. So when they come back to class, that they're not like so far behind that, you know, they learn this new math skill and they forgot it. It's like more practicing worksheets and things like that. And how that's gonna look, it's um, ever evolving. Some parents may want us to Skype with their kids or Zoom with their kids in order to provide like a little strategy or a lesson or tutorial, um, which we're fine with. Um, some parents might be overwhelmed by that. So it's like providing worksheets at home for the student to work on. So I couldn't imagine what this would be like even 10 years ago if we had this hit um, yeah. our country because we didn't have, even 10 years ago, as much technology as we have now with Zoom and Skype and FaceTime and all that stuff. Um, and Google Docs is an amazing thing too, you know? <laughs> um, so the student can work on something and you can see what they're working on. Um, so I couldn't imagine how it would be 10 years ago. Um, so with your question, like it's ever evolving, it's kind of that um, thinking outside the box and being creative uh -huh. and how can we best support students at home with their maintaining of their skills and yeah. practicing that. So. I think parents are mainly feeling like um, that the pressure doesn't have to be on them solely to be the teacher for their child. Um, and just to know that, that takes a huge burden off of parents. And um, you know, if they're homeschooling their kids, that's a different story, but I think that's what we want parents to feel like. It's not your job to be the teacher. Just hear some strategies, some, some lessons that they can kind of do, that they have learned in class already to kind of maintain those skills. Emily is supporting a lot of people right now, but she is recognizing that there are also other people around her that are supporting her with what she's trying to do. I didn't know this, but like our school secretary was just calling all the staff at the school and just checking in with us to make sure we're okay. And you know, just keeping up, make sure you're reading your school emails because you are employed during this time, you know? So we gotta kind of navigate that, um, how we like clock our hours and stuff. It's gonna be different, but um, just to see that support from like our school family and how like, it's not just, oh, we gotta support the parents, but for us to have each other's backs and kind of like, here's how we can work together and support one another, so. Knowing that that exists, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel good because it makes me feel like I'm not alone in this and navigating these new waters of how to do my job and to best support students. And um, really like my job is all about the student. So um, how do I do that with a team approach, with an individual approach? Um, it's cool to bounce ideas off each other and, and get that support. Like just a Zoom meeting I had today, 
with um, some of my team, but the school psychologist was just saying like, um, yesterday was a good day, but today it's been hard. She has three kids at home and she's still expected to do her job. That's a lot. Yeah, so she's so. supposed to provide education for her kids at home or making sure they're doing their assignments or whatever and do her psychology job on top of that. So um, it's kind of cool to hear people being real and raw. And at the same time, it's kind of hard because I'm a Christian, but I work for the state and I work for the public school system. So it's not like I can share like, you know, like I'll be praying for you or I'll share this Bible verse with you. That was really encouraging to me. So that is hard at one piece, but it's cool to just kind of be like empathetic with people outside of using the word Jesus. Right. Um, While standing in the comfort of the support that she's receiving, Emily is at a place of peace and contentment, even in the middle of everything that's happening right now. And this peace that she carries with her is something that she wants to share with other people. I think God has really called me during this time to like not look at my life as though I'm lacking anything. Um, in times of uncertainty, I can be like, oh man, like I need to make sure my job is going well so we can have an income or we need to save money. So I'm like definitely not going to buy the things I would normally buy and like kind of get worked up with that. But um, God's you're, been- You're really, talking about like historically, this is how you would yeah. respond to stress. Yeah, that's how I would historically respond to stress. But um, like looking at my life as lacking and needing to like store up and kind of hoard, uh -huh. uh, which I know like a lot of people have struggled with during this time. It's more like, how can I give? Um, whether that's through time, through listening to someone on the phone, talking to someone on the phone, or uh, buying a great bag of groceries and dropping them off at you know their house. Um, how can I be that giver um, with the things that God has given me? Knowing my wife, this is a different stress response than normal. Rather than freaking out or feeling overwhelmed and nervous for the future, I look at her and she's calm. And so I asked her, where was all this peace coming from? And how is she finding her strength today? Um, just by relying on God and getting that peace from him in times when I would normally like just freak out and start to hoard and fear and that self-interest, that self-preservation piece. Like that's our natural like human response to stress and unknown events. Um, so just like leaning into the Holy Spirit and just like spirit, just give me your peace right now. Um, I know that I believe that you can do that. Like I'm leaning into that right now and just having that peace and then operating my life from there. Yeah. How's that yeah. been working for you? It's been working good. Um, yeah. I mean, I, it's not perfect every moment of every day, but um, for a majority of the day, it's just like, um, like he'll give me an inkling to just like, yeah, go to the grocery store and just like put together a bag and like drop it off at someone's house. And um, I'm just like, yeah, I'll do that. Cause you've given me everything I need. I am operating out of abundance and peace so I can give that to other people during this time. Just like with um, the tangible ways of like um, meeting up with someone like social distancing, of course, but, um, or dropping something off at someone's house is just like, people are grateful and they're just, um, I think there's this real sense of community that's happening during this time, which I think um, out of hard times, there's growth. And out of this hard time, there's um, growth that's been happening within our communities, within people, within their hearts. And I think that's such a beautiful thing because um, out of hardships, we can have that together. Um, yeah, I like that a lot, so. Yeah, it's just a different sense of community um, when it's outside of uh, faith. And like my whole life is operated in faith, but sometimes that looks differently in different settings and that's okay, I think. Uh. Um, so whether it's at work or um, mainly at work, because I can't use the name Jesus, you know, um, I can just be there um, for people and just be a listening ear and just um, be empathetic and loving. And that's kind of the skill set God has given me naturally. So it's cool to kind of exercise that muscle even more. But um, and it's cool, too, because one of my coworkers I have talked to about Jesus because she's been open to me about her faith. Um, and so God has provided opportunities where I can talk to people about Jesus too at work, which has been cool. Yeah. So I like that too. <laughs> when it's just like, yeah, but 
when God's like, Emily, you know, like there isn't this barrier there all the time, you know, uh-huh. and kind of opens doors for, for faith conversations. And that's really cool too. So. Throughout the many stories shared on this series, it seems as though God has given every single one of us a gift for this time. God is working in this pandemic through us. He's given light, peace, and hope when the world gives darkness and fear. Emily has allowed herself to be an instrument at this time and even before the craziness. But maybe now, in the pandemic, he's beginning to solidify who we are in him and what we are meant to do in this world.